Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now, today I have got a ladder game, it is between Orc, the blue Terran player in the lower left position, and he's up against Starnan, who is the red Protoss in the top right. Now, I'm not quite sure what was going on here because Orc, as far as I'm aware, normally actually plays Zerg, so not quite sure why he's playing Terran, maybe off racing just for a bit of fun. Obviously Orc does play for Team Infused again now, um, from kind of around mid-September, so he's come back, so we'll wait and see what happens. Starnan, of course, cast a couple of his games recently, got hold of quite a few of his replays, so he's been up against some good play pool, and I'm just happy to cast them. So basically it is going to be a PVT, and I nearly got the production tab up there, very, very poor show. Now, obviously what does PVT? team mean well to be honest both players on daybreak are gonna probably try and expand relatively quickly because it's relatively safe to do so but again we'll probably see at least a one gateway one um, barracks out first from each player just to make sure that they are really not going to get completely owned by any kind of all-in. Now, there's really three phases that I like to think of in PvT. Kind of phase one is where gateway units are stupidly imbalanced and crazy good. Then that magical upgrade called Stim basically is researched and then your Protoss players, they cry a little bit, they'll be like, oh no. I'm gonna die. And then really to deal with that bio ball, which is of course marines and marauders with that stim pack upgrade, the Protoss has to get some area of effect damage either through Colossus or High Templar. Those are the two options and depending on which the Protoss goes for, the Terran really counters that with either Vikings or Ghosts and that is really the kind of very late game of PVT and something which you may see going down here. I mean at the moment we do have from Starnan, he's getting up the gateway, he's got his first gas up, a second pylon on the way. Meanwhile though for Orc, he's got 300 minerals banked up so I'm expecting to see a command center very very soon. That is the only reason you bank up that many minerals early on. Um, do of course have the orbit command on its way out and now the minerals are just still going to be going up and up and up. Now Orc, very very questionable, are you going to dream hack? Of course that occurred last weekend from when I am recording this video so that is always an interesting thing now. Any second there we go, command center comes down so everything right on cue, the cybernetics got on the way down for Starnan and really we should see an expansion out of him shortly as well unless he's going to go for one base plays or anything like that but I don't really expect it to be honest now um, what can I say while we're waiting for these two players to really reveal what they're doing yes if you do like the video please give it a thumbs up please leave a cool comment below and subscribe as well because I get at least one top level game up every single day of the week and a great little engineering bay block there from Orc that is incredibly annoying for a Protoss player but guys now you know how those Zerks feel when you keep throwing down the pylons at the expansion so there goes the council everything is all good orc is about two thirds done with his own expansion so he's he's gonna have a good economical position basically two more barracks following this up three racks very nice a lot of marines out just to defend anything that could ruin your day we do have a bunker coming down as well that's a good move it just makes you very very defensive early on and will allow you to really hold off any kind of early gateway pressure specifically a single zealot stalker which is quite a common thing to do but looking up here at Starnan's base he is getting up that single nexus there so his expansion on its way out now warp gate tech getting chrono boost no more gateways out as of yet the work account is 23 to 20 so this is all very very nice indeed so far and from what I know of this replay I haven't watched it through yet but I did have someone send me a description of it basically we're in for a good macro game to be honest so I'm really looking forward to that but apparently there's quite a few twists and turns coming up now that stalker does manage to do quite a bit of damage but that bunker of course finishing just in the nick of time we do have another pylon coming down even a bit more hidden positions a second gas coming down a second gateway warp k tick is on its way now and i'll be interested to see whether some gateways are spread out now why would you spread those gateways out purely so that if your opponent uses the orbital command uses the 50 energy to scan they can't see everything in one so that's why you probably most people tend to scan around here and that may not pick up all of these gateways because of course this is a delayed fall gate where you do have your expansion up but you still are able to put on quite a bit of pressure and with these two stalkers here if a probe comes across and drops a pylon in a good position it can be very difficult for a Terran to deal with and of course we do have that stim pack upgrade on the way for stalkers trying to poke and prod doing some damage to a couple of marines a factory on its way out almost certainly that factory 
will be the most expensive scout in the game because it's very rare to see Terrans go for mech against Protoss because it just isn't effective enough and it's much better just to use that factory to get out your starport and um, then really just get a reactor for the starport to get lots and lots of medevacs for your crazy good um, gateway units. Anyway, here comes down that pylon now. We do have a second bunker coming down. Clearly Orc isn't too happy. He's thinking something could be up and who can blame him because something is about to be up. It's four warp gates in your face and well, you're going to have to defend it pretty well. The Marauder, that's going to help massively. Stim is nowhere near going to be done in time, though. But these infantry units for Orc just pushing forward and trying to be irritating. A warping comes down. We've got some more sentries, some more zealots coming in. Those force hoods will help. The force hoods most likely to be used behind the bunkers just to prevent the SCVs from repairing them. That is really the one big thing that we need to see Starnan do in order to maximize the effectiveness of this push. You may even wait for another... Warp, wave of warpins, one more zealot on its way in. Oh, the stun and does have quite a bit of money right now. And there goes those two force fields, just as predicted. That'll prevent many of those um, SCVs being able to repair. One bunker goes down very quickly. That was a good engagement so far. If we look at the loss tab, Orc so far losing over double that of his opponent. Behind this, of course, Stanan is just getting probes, probes, and probes, and is really hugging this single remaining bunker with a lot of SCVs ready to defend because ultimately. Hawk I don't think has that much in terms of scouting information, he doesn't even know the natural base is down, so therefore he's going to be quite wide. Now, you may be thinking, what on earth is Orc doing dropping this factory down here? That's just creating a bit of a wall off, preventing those units being able to get in so nicely to attack the bunker. But what you've got to remember as well, is by having all of these SCVs pulled back, and let's just have a look, how many do we even have there? Like, well, nine SCVs. That's a lot of lost mining time right there, and it's effectively taking them completely out of the income race, which actually means Orc is getting quite far behind in terms of the income. He will be getting a third Nexus now just started there for Stana. That is an amazing expansion, and he is putting on so much pressure right now to Orc, who is supply blocked and doesn't even have another supply depot in production yet, so that is going to be very, very late. A good move forward, some force wheels go off, the repairs are just too good, but the damage output now that an additional force wheel goes down and prevents the repair, could be too high, but the bunker, by some miracle, still manages to stay alive. And now two supply depots on their way out. Orc has got very, very supply block for a very, very long period of time, and that is not something you want to be happening. Behind this, of course, Starnan is getting up. That Twilight Council, he is also getting up. Double forge for the double upgrades there, just finishing up, and a lot more gateways. That gateway pressure really going to continue right now. Two more barracks on the way out for Orc right now. He does have a couple of medevacs out, two at the moment, a third one on the way. That second bunker is finished, and I think it is a great move by Starnan to pull back and just defend this third base because a three base Protoss can do whatever they want, really. Can't wait to see if the tech goes any higher at the moment. Charge is coming off those zealots, that'll make them a lot more effective. The 1 1 melee ground upgrades on the way out right now, or the 1-1 one, one ground upgrades coming up there. So used to playing Zerg that I'm like melee or range, that's the only difference. Where of course with Protoss it upgrades everything regardless. And well, for the moment it looks like Orc is planning on trying to do some counter pressure. And I'm not sure how much of a good idea that's going to be. Because I do believe his army is at a similar size and with a massive warp in that will be available any second. This force could just be so, so powerful. Charge won't quite be done in time. That is still about 60 seconds away, or a minute for those of you who are good at telling the time. And, well, we've got this third base all coming in. He's got Stim, of course. He doesn't have any... He does have the plus one infantry weapon upgrades. I didn't think he had any, but here we go. We've got a big engagement coming in now. Some force was absolutely brilliant, trapping so many units right now. A great pickup, though, by Orc. Just dropping those behind the force fields and will be able to get away. In terms of the loss tab, though, so far, Starnan has now lost quite a bit more. A factory on its way over just to get some scouting information. The third base is three quarters done for Orc behind this push because that is a principle of SC2 is that you push and expand behind because if your opponent is defending, they are not likely to be attacking you. Now, of course, the 1-1 one, one upgrades have now just clicked into effect here for Starnan. That is a gain compared to the 1-0 oh upgrade. So Starnan has now taken the upgrade advantage, is getting out, well, charge is done. And other than that, no sign of any tech. Would like to see a Templar archives just to get those high Templar in there. Two Zealots just coming and picking away. They've delayed this expansion a long time. They won't kill it, but of course they did manage to pick off the SCV, which means that that base isn't going to finish anytime soon. At least until another SCV comes down, which there isn't any sign of one yet. Here it comes. 
Go on, little rescuing CB, SCB. This factory will probably now get taken down, and that is a loss because while it's not being used for anything, if Orc did want to build any more starports, he will need a factory. It's a tech requirement, but anyway, any second now, that factory is gonna go kaboom. It's already on fire. It's trying to run away, and it just isn't gonna work. That poor factory. Look at it. Look at it. And what was that? That bit went a mile. Seriously, that was a long way for that to go. Anyway, we do have the third base up here for Orc. Um, obviously, Starnan has had his own third base up for quite a while. Mining very, very happy. But look at this. Orc bringing his entire army up. But there are Stalkers there. Don't manage to quite get a meta back, though. That was pretty close. But they could get cut off by these units if they aren't careful. Of oh, my God. The Stalker. The Stalker. Be careful, meta back. You've only got 21 HP. Don't. Run away. Run away, medevac. You've got seven. If you get one more shot, medevac, you're going to die. You're going to die, medevac. That was close. That was really close, Orc. Orc, your medevac nearly died. Don't lose medevacs full of units. It is not a good time. Anyway, the 2-2 upgrades, then the Dumblink is on his way out as well. Now, the first High Templar are coming out, six of them. They're probably going to get more straight into Archons, I would imagine, because at the moment there is no sign of Psionic Storm, or commonly referred to as the Storm upgrade. So there goes those Archons, three on their way out. We do have quite a few Ghosts, though. Ghosts wreck Archons, but he does EMP damage to shields. The fourth base attempt of Starnan is down. Orc is getting up his own fourth base behind this. That'll put him ahead economically. In terms of the work count, Starnan is about 10 workers ahead, so that is all good. And now here we go, we're going to have a big engagement coming down right now. Those Archons, they've got to do some big damage. Some force fields do manage to go down, trap a few years. You need to be very careful though, but these are great force fields following that up. Literally splitting this army into pieces. The Zealots are trying to engage the best they can. The Archons do an awful lot of damage, and in terms of resources lost, that has put Orc behind fractionally, but they are still very close indeed. Those Medivacs will get taken down. That is a big loss because that actually takes the Medivac count down to only two on the field right now. Medivac so essential in order to make that infantry, the Marines and Rod, is so much more potent. The Ghosts are on their way out though, but this is a big counterattack from Starnound right now, and I cannot wait to see how he really goes about pushing this. That fourth base, if it stays up, would be an absolute miracle. I don't think there's going to be any way for that to happen. In all honesty, because there's just too much stuff here. But Orc, he's pushing forward. He's going to try and deal the damage. A fourth field goes down, just preventing those units coming down. That will ensure that Starnan will be able to force a counter on that fourth base. And his own fourth base is now on the way. So this is relentless pressure on both sides. And just two zealots coming up here to check on the very top position for any expansions. For the moment though, Starnan, he is getting up that Psionic Storm upgrade. He will get a couple of High Templar out ready to use that soon. Need to start thinking about warping them in pretty quickly because otherwise, of course, he will end up with no energy on them after patches and patches ago. There was a time when there was an upgrade you could get for High Templar and they would basically pop up with enough mana to storm. But with warping, it was quite powerful so for some reason Blizzard felt the need to remove that and there was lots of flaming on the forum but that was a little Starcraft history lesson for you anyway a pylon coming down here in a very top position now just enable a warp in to uh, aggravate that base should it go down the fourth command center actually being built inside just outside of the natural uh, fifth command center sorry the fourth one already built and orc is going command center crazy he's getting that personal cloak from good out for the ghost he's getting the plus one ship weapons in preparation for those colossus which haven't even been conceived yet by Starnan, he's just getting the robotics bay up and then he'll probably start on them but orc really in a good spot at the moment the supply is so equal just two cannons there are big wave warpings they come in a lot of zealots those zealots are 3-3 now of course that is up against 2-2 two, 3-3 two, three, three, just on the way starting now for Orc. So Starnan very far ahead in terms of the upgrades and will be for, well, roughly about 200 seconds. So a pretty decent amount of time. Now, Orc is trying to just get a good angle of attack and that is precisely what he's going to do. He's going to split up the fourth and third base of Starnan. And that will be very, very annoying. Scans going off. Those ghosts trying to do anything and anything they can. But here we go. This is a big committal right now by Orc. He needs to do an awful lot of damage. He needs to be very, very careful indeed. Those High Templar warp in, but they don't have enough energy. A couple of ghosts are in and around now. They, of course, can snipe down the Archons and deal very good damage. Some great EMPs going off, picking off so many shields. Great positioning of um, Alt's army, allowing those units to engage the Zed very, very effectively. A great storm goes down, though. 
but to be honest I feel like Orc has just got too much stuff right now at least at the moment there's no observer around as far as I can see and that lack of an observer there we go we've got an observer in there somewhere or we must have no it's attacking the zealots instead those ghosts being so irritating indeed the scan going off just to make sure there is an observer an observer is on the way though we'll finish any second but for the moment those ghosts are going to be absolutely wreaking havoc you probably pick off that third base without too much trouble but there comes no it's not even the observer yet where is that observer it's it's giving vision somewhere where is it am i just being blind why can't i see it what was nope apparently nothing's giving vision now those ghosts they're just still going to chill and mill around i must be imagining things a couple of colossus on the way out so far there's the second one two being built at a time Actually, potential for three to be built at a time. That is pretty potent indeed. Now, we do have the ghosts poking and prodding around. So far, though, Orki is getting that orbital planetary fortress rather at the fourth base. That's a good move. And he's moving up his fifth to go and take that. But there is a zealot there. Starnam did a good job defending that for the moment. But both players on very similar work accounts. Their resources lost incredibly similar. But the big thing to remember is, of course, Orc does have mules. And mules are basically going to allow him to have a much better economy I would imagine I mean if we do take a look at the income obviously Orc is getting an awful lot more minerals right now those zealots they're coming in but there is a ghost there as well as quite a few marines they do very very well against zealots indeed so that zealot doesn't really do much at all the fifth base won't be able to go down though unless it is picked off that single zealot which is hiding under a planetary under under a normal command center rather but obviously if that does land it always if this was the realm of logic, I think a building landing on your head would not be an issue, especially like when you just got Zerg in there. But this is not the land of logic, this is the land of Starcraft, and to be honest, this is a big push coming in right now for Starnan. But needs to be careful, there's a couple of Vikings around, a couple of Ghosts, the MPs were good, and it looks like Starnan making a wise move of just pulling back and being a bit more careful. Two Ghosts hidden down there, no tactical nukes or anything done yet, which is a shame because nukes are always good times. Orc spreading his units before the engagement. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a great thing to do. No matter what level you are, if you're just sitting around, spread out those units because if that push does come in, you've automatically got a better attack arc and it's just brilliant. So, here we go. We've got Starnan pretty much maxed out now, getting that Dark Shrine. May try and run a couple of DTs in here, but Missile Tide on the way down. Pylon going to get picked off as well. The Observer is there, just taking a look at what Orc has. Orc also maxed out as well, getting the plus two ship weapons. The Colossus count isn't hugely high at only four, but there are a couple of Archons there as well. Most of the army seems to be comprised, indeed, of Zealots and also High Templar. Now, High Templar plus, plus Colossus are just so strong, simply for the reason that they can do so much damage so quickly to so many units. The splash is absolutely insane. And, um, well, for the moment, both these players are pretty much maxed out. And at some point, there'll have to be an engagement. But neither of the players will want to be the one to engage. A fifth base attempt coming down here now for Starnan. And, of course, that is to combat the fifth base. It's already up and running for Orc. It is a planetary fortress as well. So it will be very, very hard to take down anytime soon. That observer did come over. There are now six Colossus on the field, and well, a 6th, 7th, 8th command center on the way for Orc, because if you're maxed out, why not just build command centers everywhere, because they cost a lot of minerals and it keeps your money low, that's, that's a good reason to build command centers, and barracks of course, command center and barracks are the staple of every Terran's army, and <laughs> well anyway, we do have a down here, he is really not wanting to engage because there's just so many vikings there what's the ghost count like well there are four ghosts at the moment and now this could potentially be a very nice move there is a war prism on the field or there was a war prism a war prism being built on the field now for star and he could come and drop come and be irritating because ultimately all of orcs production pretty much is in his main base so is all of his key tech so if that were to get taken down that could be very strong indeed so we'll wait and see if that war prism is used now there is a dt warping in somewhere Although, the somewhere is the optimal question. Will show up on the sensor tower, so should get reacted to relatively easily. That sensor tower placement is absolutely great. Let's obviously all know everything that's coming on. The only downside could be is a war prism. That may just sneak in behind the back, and that would be very, very annoying. There is a missile tide there, so that DT is going to die 
pretty damn quick. He does get one SUV kill. We'll get a second two SUV kills. That is actually not bad in the slightest. But so many missile types around here right now for Orc that that War Prism is not going to be able to get in. That's going to be quite irritating indeed. One DT coming out. And well, now we've got Starnat trying to poke and put his way. Does not manage to pick off a sensor tower? That is, of course, very, very good because that means that this War Prism can now come and try and sneak in, except there's literally no angles of attack right now. It's absolutely crazy. And the scan will indeed see it. We did have an attempt to move out right there, but some storms went down. Some good storms of that. The War Prism gets taken down, but nothing to attack the DT at the moment. So the DT can pretty much go to town. Uh, but there is this small force of marines and marauders coming over, which could kill it, assuming there's detection. But if that DT stays out the way, as it is at the moment, um, it needs to get out of range of that other missile type. But there goes down the scan. So scan force, so that's not a mule ultimately. And just look at all of these command centers. This is ridiculous. There is just so many of them. They're everywhere. I'm not even counting that many. Starnan is still maxed out. Orc still maxed out. Orc getting those two tactical nukes. Oh my god, seriously, every part of me hopes a nuke is going to be used effectively because who doesn't love nukes? Nobody doesn't. So, nobody does means everyone does. For anyone being like double negative there, what are you doing? But there's a lot of Vikings. That is an awful lot of Vikings. They're going to mow through the six Colossus. 14 Vikings against six Colossus is not going to last long. There's only a handful of Stalkers and actually Archons as well, so... It could be hard, but of course... Oh, sorry for the yawn there, but that is crazy, don't know what was going on there. But no, we do have, obviously, a lot of units on the field right now for Starnan, and well... Orc, he's just got in a good position, he's got the 3-3 upgrades, he's getting the plus 3 ship weapons, and he could get a Colossus for free here, and he does manage to! And that was a beautiful little win for Orc, getting a Colossus for nothing is always fun time. A DT is trying to take down an orbital to command, but Orc doesn't really mind because he has some more. Just one. Well, I'll just use one of my spare orbital commands because I've built so many of them. The bang for Starnan getting incredibly high. His fifth base is up, his sixth base on its way out. A couple more pylons that eventually become, um, get photon cannons around them as well, trying to defend, but this is such a stalemate situation. Neither player really wants to go for it because the defender's advantage could literally swing the battle whichever way they favour. Three DTs now actually picking off an awful lot of viewers. Doesn't quite get that last mule. Two on only three HP. That's a bit of a shame. But here we go. We've got engagement coming in now. Those Vikings are going to do a lot of damage. They are all stacked up at the moment. The Archons do take just such huge damage. No storms went off quite in time though. A couple of High Templar could get picked off if they're not careful. The Colossus do turn around though to try and deal some extra damage. No drops or run bys going on at the moment as far as I can see. But that doesn't mean they're not happening. It could just be that I am blind. Obviously this third base pretty oversaturated. Um, Orc actually spreading out his mining very, very well, for the moment anyway. Might now is main and natural, the third's getting low. That's a similar situation here for Starnan. He is mined out at his main natural and pretty much his third as well now. That's going to be gone any second, so it will be two mining bases compared to four mining bases, which is never too fun. And just so many mules coming out. So it's the Orc's ability to gather minerals is going to be absolutely crazy and that's what he really needs as you can see banking five, over five and a half thousand gas right now but here we go we've got a big engagement that's storm Starnan needs to be careful not to lose too much at the moment engaging very cost ineffectively that's something you want to be careful about because the second you start engaging cost ineffectively even if you're ahead in terms of income you're not going to have a good time now. The other important thing to note is, as you can see, 55 workers to 83. The key thing about that is it's nearly 20 supply not being taken up in workers for Orc that is for Starnan. But it doesn't really bother Orc because he's just got so many orbital commands that he can just keep getting mules and mules of good units. So why not? Anyway, we've got another engagement here, but those Vikings are doing so much damage to the Colossus. It's absolutely insane. And essentially, Orc can just rematch than ever and Earth if he wants to. And without the splash damage from the Colossus, it would be very, very difficult for Starnan to be able to push through this. But he's doing okay at the moment. A bit of miscontrol there from Orc. There's no counter attacks coming or anything. A good storm goes down on an awful lot of Vikings. A morphin of an Archon in the midst of all of this as well. And this game is getting pretty damn crazy. Neither player can really go too well. And I'm amazed that Archon survived. I would have just picked it off. Like, it was completely defenseless. It would be like taking candy from... 
from a very very young baby that is how easy it would have been but you know what else is easy sending a stupid amount of zealots in and you know what's hard though is sending them in so they do no damage at all before dying which would be just quite hilarious and upsetting of course for Starnam but has now realized that everything's dying he is coming up with the rest of his army to the top to try and pick up that fifth place for the moment though we do have those zealots getting in one zealot makes it into the base hero zealot is like my job was to go here and do any damage I could. Some SCVs getting picked off there at the moment. Starnan is going to try and do some damage a lot of long range SCV mining. The base count is pretty similar right now. One base up for Starnan of course. About to be two bases up and by picking off this planet fortress. That is a very big win indeed. The Vikings, the Vikings are stacked up and look how much damage they take from the Archons. And that could cost off so much if it wasn't the fact that you already put all the Vikings, all the Colossus. So to be honest, this is a game leveling up quite nicely. I'd have to say though, Orc, I feel like he's ahead for the moment. I mean, he does have more supply. He has got more orbit commands everywhere. He's still building them. He's building planetary fortresses everywhere. Orc, Orc just likes likes the main buildings, basically. He, he just likes building his bases and bases and bases and bases because Exhibit told him to. That is pretty much how it works. But still, Looking around, we just got constant streams of production, but yet again, Starnan already remaxed out with those three Colossus. He's got 18 Stalkers, the one Sentry, and 11 High Templar. Perhaps a few too many High Templar. Don't need that many, in my opinion, but some Storms could go down. Need to use the Storms if you've got so many High Templar. And that Storm wasn't quite as good as it could have been. The units were already moving back. That was a good Storm, though. That dealt quite a bit of damage and nearly its entire time dealing damage there. The medevacs getting picked off and without the medevacs of course Org has a problem that he cannot heal up that storm damage and his infantry ball will get very very low very very quickly and that would be bad bad times for him. Anyway with Starnan he is still playing on the pressure and is now very far ahead in terms of the supply about 60 supply ahead at the moment and that is just very very nice for him that orbit command yet again getting picked off. Starnan does not want a fifth base up he's just like no, sixth base rather. He's just like, no, no, no. I've got my sixth base. You cannot have yours because I want your sixth base to have seven bases. Starnan playing incredibly well at the moment. And Orc seems to be struggling to just end it. To be honest, Starnan, he's, Starnan has got all the units he needs. Orc has got all the units, or did have all the units he needed to counter Starnan. But just can't seem to do it. And that is going to be very, very annoying indeed. Anyway, we do have a couple of stalkers coming in here. Just trying to do some damage. Pick up that missile charge so GTs can get in. But that does mean that Orc's army is out of position now. Here comes a lot of units moving in right now. Those missile tides getting taken down. The central base should fall as well. A lot of Colossus there at the moment. But somehow manages to survive. That is incredibly lucky. Not being repaired up yet though. But Starnan has secured up a 7th base behind this. And it is 3 quarters done. And it's in a very, very strong spot. Another planetary fortress in the middle there. Just literally planetary fortress everywhere. But look at this. Look at how many DTs are coming in. That base, it would have to be like ninja reactions. And ninja reactions indeed there were. The scan goes off though. Everything melts very quickly. The DTs hiding. A second scan would now be required. Best thing to do in this situation is split the DTs up to try and give them space. But Starnan, he's not worried about that. He's worried about getting a counter attack in. And just look at all of these bases get taken down and of course the problem is that those SCVs and everything could die if the Colossus just focus them rather than the Planetary Fortress of course. Planetary Fortress everywhere engaging very cost effectively and now Orc is coming in for the complete round we'll get a couple of Colossus that is very very nice for him. Some DTs warping in at some point not quite sure where but I overcome the High Templar and will force the storms and the retreat out of Orc. This game is summing up to be so so crazy it is just bonkers and that is just brilliant because I like bonkers games now we will see here Org trying to build an expansion on an expansion that doesn't work it's not like the mothership for in half this one you can't build it on your opponent's base or anything like that but this is a big engagement going on right now and Stunan does actually look like it's coming up too well all the Colossus not there at all there are no crosses left in the field, they were all picked off something, I'm not quite sure when that happened. But this could be a killing blow for Orc if he plays it well. Starnan though just seems to be able to hold on and he's just doing so much damage right now. The medevac's out of energy and how that didn't go in Orc's favour I really don't know because Starnan, he was really really hurting and didn't have much 
area of effect damage at all, so the Colossus were down. I didn't see any absolutely amazing storms, perhaps I missed them. The DT going down now, that will allow Orc to retake this fifth base. He's got two more of those command centers, Planetary Fortress, Orbital Command there, and well, Stonan, he's getting up three Colossus at a time, building a lot of Photon Cannons, but Orc, he's really strong with income and isn't now under half of the supply of his opponent. And that is not a fun position to be in. Orc also pretty broke on the mineral front, getting an awful lot of mules up here. But this base is starting to run slightly low in my opinion on minerals. Only got about four or five hundred left. DT's on the way in and there is no sign of a missile turret. That means a scan would be forced. That'd be very annoying. Two DTs are gonna be able to deal a lot of damage very, very quickly. But over of course comes Orc's units. There goes down the scan. But yet again has happened time and time again. Orc deals with those couple of DTs but ignores the fact that Starnan's main army is just coming straight in. This is some good engagements right now. We do have those Marines and Mortars trying to do damage to Custom Shell, allowing Orc to catch up, but some Archons morphing in. The Colossus count is a bit low, and those are GG well played because Starnan basically starved his opponent to death, and that was an epic macro game with lots of aggression and harassment in the entire way. So guys, if you did enjoy, please thumbs up the video, please subscribe, I get a new top level game up every single day of the week, and also leave a cool comment below about the players, my casting, the game, anything. I'm Maddles, and you've watched the StarCraft 2 England cast, flick over to my channel and give another one a watch. Bye for now.